Bro, Shinra's about to save them. Let's go. Wait, what the fuck? Tamaki, why are you naked? I'm tired of bullshit rescue arcs. Like, I think we all are. The rescue arc is honestly an overdone trope that's really boring if it's not done well. Too many rescue plots rely on cheesy power friendship moments instead of showcasing raw emotion. Not only that, but the endings are really predictable, which just makes all attention completely non-existent. I'm gonna show you what makes or breaks a rescue arc using examples from the big three. And what better examples to use than arguably their best arcs. After this, your story is gonna be as good as Soul Society, which is where Bleach really started to pick up. The plot centers around Ichigo and his friends infiltrating Soul Society to save Rukia. Bleach never really got the respect it deserves and like, Bleach is my favorite anime, but to be fair, everyone agrees that Soul Society is peak. So let's go over what made everyone fall in love with the first big arc of Bleach. I mean, first off, the tension is unmatched, and the pacing is almost perfect, especially for its time. And the reason why this is so important is because a rescue arc with no tension is just plain boring. If you know they're gonna rescue the person easy peasy and just waltz out afterward with like no problems, what's, what's even the point of watching? It's just filler at that point. And Bleach knew this, that's why he kept on giving us new things to worry about as the plot progressed. Okay, first off, the crew gets split up. Okay, now this crazy guy Kenpachi is trying to find Ichigo. Ichimaru acting hella sus the whole time. Wait, why the fuck is Aizen dead now? You see, I could go on and on, like the plot just keeps getting more and more interesting as it goes on. We learn about the politics of the world, we learn about the character relationships. And another thing you're gonna see in the next two examples is that rescue arcs are central to the development of characters. So because rescue arcs are all structured as like an infiltration, kind of like a journey into the unknown, it serves as a way to make the characters grow up. I mean, it's so straightforward in Bleach. Ichigo starts from fighting Ikaku, who's only a third seat. Then he moves up to Renji, who's a lieutenant. And mind you, he gets injured throughout these, so it's like, these aren't easy fights for him. The next fight he has is with Kimpachi, who is like an absolute monster, but he's just trolling the whole time, so like, Ichigo somehow lives. And finally, the big fight for Ichigo at the end is with Byakuyao, who's Rukia's brother. And he's one of the captains, so he's like one of the strongest characters. Ichigo had to fight and die several times all in the span of just one arc just to be strong enough to fight Byakuya and even then he still almost dies. Not just Ichigo but all of his friends had to fight against people thousands of times stronger than them. And they all managed to fight and somehow live. I mean like I'm really not exaggerating when I say Ichigo and his friends fought people thousands of times stronger than them, hundreds of thousands of times stronger than them. At this point in the story, yeah, they were hundreds of thousands of times stronger. So when the stakes and tension are that high and like you really don't know how the characters are gonna win, like how they're gonna make it out of their life. And that's what's so great about this arc. The ending is just such a huge rush of adrenaline. All the characters come together for an all out battle. Those who stand with Ichigo and those who stand against him. And obviously the most important twist being Aizen's death being an illusion and him tricking everyone. Not only that, but Ichimaru working for him and Tosen also working for him which nobody saw coming. As you can tell, I love Bleach. It has amazing action and utilizes the lore of the world perfectly as we see in Soul Society. I'm so excited to talk about the next one. Eddie's Lobby in One Piece. Even though it takes place in pre-timescape, it still holds up as a fan favorite. Only second to Marineford, which is also technically a rescue arc, it's just not really much rescuing being done there, if you know what I mean. The rescue arc centers around saving Robin, which sounds like a typical damsel in a distress situation, but it's not. Robin isn't a damsel in distress. She sacrificed herself to save her friends. Since she was a child, she had been jumping from place to place, barely surviving without friends or family. When she finally felt accepted by Luffy and his friends, she made the decision to sacrifice herself for her friends to save them. She didn't want a buster call to be called on them because she had seen the damage can cause. You know how the Straw Hats are though, they don't leave anyone behind. So they infiltrated the fucking world government to save her. Again, the tension is super high with this one. When I was watching this, I was like, okay, breaking in is one thing. How are you gonna get out? You're in like one of the highest security places in the entire world. Like, I just did not see how it was gonna happen. But Luffy just waltzes in, no fear, and declares war on the world government. This part was one of the most memorable scenes of all time. Who stops sniping the world flag after and Robin crying that she wants to live. All in the same moment, it was just perfect. Okay, so stakes are there, tension's there, and theme is there. All that's left are the final fights, which are equally amazing. Like I said earlier, rescue arcs are a way for the characters to grow up. And they grow up not just emotionally, but also physically and like strength-wise. Eddie's Lobby has all of the Straw Hats get in their own individual fights and get power-ups. 
Gear 2, Ashura, Diablo Jamble, Monster Point, Thunderlands Tempo, it just never let the hype die down. I mean, I just named like 10 different iconic scenes in One Piece, and I can keep on going, and they're all part of Eni's Lobby. Eni's Lobby serves as a checkpoint for the characters, when they are forced to get stronger, and I think that's the best way to use rescue arcs. It's almost perfect as a way to let your characters power up, because it's a physical and metaphorical journey into the unknown. Our last example is probably the best example of growth characters go through in a rescue arc. Sasuke Retrieval Arc, a very different type of rescue arc. Yet, it still hits all the different requirements for what makes a good rescue arc. I mean, the first big main difference is Sasuke isn't a damsel in distress. I mean, shit, he doesn't even want to be saved. He left on his own, which makes this a really different type of mission, but it still works. And that's because, once again, the tension is very high. These are formidable opponents at this point in the story. And most importantly, there are no adults. It's just the boys. My main problem with OG Naruto was that I just didn't want to watch the kids. They were all so, like, weak and boring. I don't know, I just wanted to watch people like Orochimaru and Kakashi fight because their skill sets were more interesting. But in this arc, it actually works. Why? Because this arc served as a transformation for them to become boys into men. This arc, like the previous two, let each character have their moment to shine in an individual battle. And this let them power up and show their resilience and loyalty to Konoha. Just like any good rescue arc, the ending starts to ramp up, with surprise appearances from Rock Lee and the San Trio. They brought in all the fan favorites for the culmination of the original show. And yes, finally, Naruto vs Sasuke, which is still one of the best Naruto fights. Not just visually, but what it meant for these characters to win. I love this ending to a rescue arc because it's just so different from the rest. They were trying to save Sasuke and it somehow ends up in a fight against Sasuke. I know everyone thinks this was predictable, but the fact that Sasuke actually leaves and fails to rescue him is a great ending to the original series. When it first came out, I bet there are tons of people who are fully expecting him to return to the Leaf Village. Because nobody could have predicted that Shippuden was going to come after. If you didn't know, everything after the Sasuke retrieval arc in the anime is just all filler, so the original Naruto was actually just supposed to end with the Sasuke retrieval arc. One Piece does something similar with his time skip. Luffy also fails to save Ace, and both of these events force the main characters to leave their friends and train, and that's what happens during the time skip. I personally love the idea of a rescue arc failing. I feel like more plots need to end in a failure. It's a more unique experience for the audience, and it forces change in the plot. Like in Naruto, failing a mission doesn't mean that major characters need to die. The story has all the characters live and be impacted by the failure of their mission. Obviously, Naruto famously threw all of their characters in the trash can after the time skip. But hey, at face value, the rescue arc was still good if you just don't know what comes after. So there's my piece on rescue arcs. Comment your favorite rescue arc in the comments.